Chapter 4 Have But One Eucharist, etc. Wherefore, I write boldly to your love, which is worthy of God, and exhort you to have but one faith, and one kind of preaching, and one Eucharist. For there is one flesh of the Lord Jesus Christ, and his blood which was shed for us is one. One loaf also is broken to all the communicants, and one cup is distributed among them all. There is but one altar for the whole church, and one bishop, with the presbytery and deacons, my fellow servants. Since also there is but one unbegotten being, God, even the Father, and one only begotten Son, God, the Word, and man, and one Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, and also one preaching, and one faith, and one baptism, and one church which the holy apostles established from one end of the earth to the other by the blood of Christ, and by their own sweat and toil, it behooves you also, therefore, as a peculiar people and a holy nation, to perform all things with harmony in Christ." Wives, be subject to your husbands in the fear of God, and ye virgins, to Christ in purity, not counting marriage an abomination, but desiring that which is better, not for the reproach of wedlock, but for the sake of meditating on the law. Children, obey your parents, and have an affection for them, as workers together with God for your birth into the world." Servants, be subject to your masters in God, that ye may be the freedmen of Christ. Husbands, love your wives, as fellow servants of God, as your own body, as the partners of your life, and your co-adjutors in the procreation of children. Virgins, have Christ alone before your eyes, and his Father in your prayers, being enlightened by the Spirit. May I have pleasure in your purity, as that of Elijah, or as of Joshua the son of Nun, or as of Melchizedek, or as of Elisha, as of Jeremiah, or as of John the Baptist, as of the beloved disciple, as of Timothy, as of Titus, as of Euodius, as of Clement, who departed this life in perfect chastity. Not, however, that I blame the other blessed saints, because they entered into the married state of which I have just spoken. For I pray that, being found worthy of God, I may be found at their feet in the kingdom, as at the feet of Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, as of Joseph, and Isaiah, and the rest of the prophets, as of Peter, and Paul, and the rest of the apostles, that were married men. For they entered into these marriages, not for the sake of appetite, but out of regard for the propagation of mankind. Fathers, bring up your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, and teach them the holy scriptures, and also trades, that they may not indulge in idleness. Now the scripture says, A righteous father educates his children well, his heart shall rejoice in a wise son. Masters, be gentle towards your servants, as holy Job has taught you, for there is one nature and one family of mankind, for in Christ there is neither bond nor free. Let governors be obedient to Caesar, soldiers to those that command them, deacons to the presbyters as to high priests, the presbyters and deacons and the rest of the clergy, together with all the people and the soldiers and the governors and Caesar himself to the bishop, the bishop to Christ, even as Christ to the Father, and thus unity is preserved throughout. Let not the widows be wanderers about, nor fond of dainties, nor gadders from house to house, but let them be like Judith, noted for her seriousness, and like Anna, eminent for her sobriety. I do not ordain these things as an apostle, for who am I, or what is my father's house, that I should pretend to be equal in honor to them? But as your fellow soldier, I hold the position of one who simply admonishes you.'